Well, we're excited to, for the opportunity to play Illinois, which is a great program in the Big Ten. Uh, you know, obviously very familiar with the Big Ten, being a Midwest guy growing up in Akron, Ohio. Um, great coach, strong ties with him, uh, good friends with Bob Huggins, who he obviously worked for. And so we're looking forward to the opportunity. Thank you. Questions start right here in the aisle, and then we'll go here on the aisle first. Jeremy Warner, 24-7 Sports. Keith, what are the challenges that Illinois provides you compared to the team you played yesterday? A little different team than the team we played. We went from the 10th best offensive team in the country to the second best offensive team in the country. We went, we're appreciative of that. <laughs> um, you know, Terry Shannon, uh, is a big challenge. Uh, reminds me of LeBron in the open court. Thankfully, not quite as good as LeBron, but pretty good. Um, you know, back down point guard, which is a little different nowadays. More isolation plays. Uh, big guys playing well. Um, pretty good shooting team. Obviously, a high scoring team. So, um, similar, similar type of game plan for us. You know, we just can't allow the game to get up into the 90s and 80s. We just have to grind it out. Keith Tim Benz from Duquesne Radio and Trib Live in Pittsburgh. Uh, this is actually a piggyback on top of that question, but when it comes to um, your propensity and desire to sort of play mud balls you've talked about before, um, how do you avoid Illinois speeding you up, and are they more prone to do so than what you saw from BYU? Well, I don't think it's a typical Brad Underwood type of defensive team. I think they're very good defensively, but they're not a team that gets like kind of pressures you like the old Bob Huggins and the Frank Martin teams that he's had before. Um, they're more of a position defensive team, and they, you know, they're big around the rim and they make good plays around the rim. But they're a good defensive team, but they're not a team that takes you out of the things that you try to do. Right here in the center. Good afternoon, Keith. I'm Steve Greenberg from the Chicago Sun-Times. You've, you've been around a little bit. You'd probably agree. Uh, you've seen every, you know, a lot of really good college teams. This Illinois team with its sort of positionlessness and length and these explosive runs they've had in a bunch of games in a row, does it remind you of a, of a team you've either played against or just observed this time of year? Um, you know what, I just try to, first off, I have been around a long time. You had to remind me of that, huh? Thanks. I looked that old, really? <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, this time of year, I really don't concentrate on who who they remind me of or, or things like that. I just try to get prepared for the game. Uh, clearly, they have a good team. Uh, they play in a great league. They have a great coach. They have great players. Um, but with that being said, we're certainly good enough to compete with them. And we're good enough to win the game, you know, if we do the things that we need to do to to, to win. Um, you know, I think we surprised BYU a little bit with our toughness. I think we surprised them with our defensive intensity. I don't think they played a game that low scoring most of the year. And so, you know, hopefully we can surprise Illinois a little bit as well. Right here in the front, Rebecca, go. Keith, Rebecca Joswiak with Duquesne Student TV. Um, Hassan Drama has taken more of a backseat role this season, stepping more into a leadership mentor role, um, not playing as many minutes. How has Hassan's guidance contributed to how the team has been playing and just the overall chemistry of the team? Well, in fairness to Hassan, he had a bad knee most of the year. Um, he's been in a lot of big games, made it all the way to the Elite Eight from St. Peter's, which was one of the most remarkable feats probably in college basketball history in, in a lot of ways. Um, but both those dramas are complete competitors, tough, hard-nosed guys, very bright, you know, good brains, uh, very intelligent and well-respected amongst our team. So he's done an unbelievable job adapting and almost becoming a, a student coach for us. Far right-hand side, Coach, thank you. Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. I'm sure you've been asked this a hundred times. It's uh, okay. <laughs> you had a five-game losing streak uh, to start the year, the calendar year. Um, how'd you get them out of that rut? Like, what 
did you have to do anything or did you rely on the team? What techniques did you use to get them out of that, that spot? Well, I didn't think we played all that poorly during that five-game stretch, although it may appear so. Uh, we started the season at UMass, and they were better than what people expected. And They have a coach who's been to the Final Four, tough guy. Uh, we went to Loyola, Chicago, and people didn't think they were very good, but they ended up winning our league or tying for the – and then we played Dayton at home, who's in the top 25, and then we played uh, Richmond, who ended up tying for the league, who didn't people didn't think were very good. And then we had to go to St. Joe's, who played in the NIT, and we lost at the buzzer. So uh, the biggest thing is straight character, and I think the reason we've done so well as of late is because we lost those games uh, in early January. And I think a lot of people quit on us, and really all we had was ourselves. And we had good enough talent that if we got it right and we found the right things for our guys, that we were capable of winning. And we've shown that. I think we've won nine games in a row, maybe 10 out of 11. In the Atlantic 10, that's hard to do, whether you're in the Big Ten, you know, the Pac-12 or the ACC. If you win nine games in a row in your league, relatively speaking, you're playing good basketball. Back to the center. Thank you. Uh, I, I have uh, two questions. Can I keep it for a follow-up? Okay. First, um, you know, you're, you're, uh, uh, I want to know why now as far as retiring and, um, and about your emotions. I've heard you sort of joke about how the, the guys don't want to let you, let you go, um, but you must be experiencing conflicting emotions right now that you're trying to keep in order because you're trying to win. What are you feeling and, and, and how hard is it? Well, to answer your first question, uh, why now? Just felt it was felt like it was the right time. You know, uh, it's been a hard seven years. Uh, I lost my dad during the time we were out of the arena for two years. Uh, COVID. Uh, wife's got breast cancer. You know, I just wanted to leave when I loved it still, and uh, I made the decision before the season. You know, so. Uh, that's that's really the reason why now. Uh, what was the second question? Just about how, what you're the emotions? What's going on inside? Um, I've been through this before. You know, I lost my dad during the season, right before the season. Uh, my first state championship at St. V, uh, St. Vincent, St. Mary in Akron. Uh, I lost my mom during the regional semifinals and had to coach the, the, the finals and the uh, semifinals and then the championship game. So I've been able to compartmentalize uh, and really just focus on my job and my family. And so uh, I have some emotional times, but I also have some good, like, relaxed times. I feel like it's the most relaxed I've ever coached. I, I think once you get to this point and you know you're not going to coach anymore, you just go out there and prepare them and, you know, know that you've done a, a good job with the guys and you care about winning and just play. So I, I haven't let much bother me. I think it's helped me that uh and the other question is about underwood you mentioned your ties what are they well again you know uh, i followed bob huggins at akron and bob helped me get almost every job that i've ever gotten uh throughout my career and, and brad's really a disciple of bob huggins so you know we've known each other because of that you know andy kennedy and um, and uh, frank martin and all of us are pretty much disciples even though i never coached with bob a lot of the things we do are related to Bob, a lot of respect for him as a coach and as a human being, a little misunderstood. Um, and that's why, that's why I have great respect for Coach Underwood. I know that they're, they're very close. We are, we are halfway through the session. We have two questions up right here in front. Rebecca, thank you. Hi, Keith. Um, I know we've already talked a little bit of it about Terrence Shannon Jr., but can you walk us through um, your defensive assessment of him and Marcus Damask for us? You want me to give away my whole game plan? or <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty clear if you watch them. Uh, Shannon's a definite pro. You know, maybe a first-round draft pick. I don't know. I don't know where he is on the board. I really don't look at stuff like that. Explosive athlete. Unbelievable going to the rim in the open court. Good three-ball shooter. Good toughness, good motor. Uh, Damask, we played at, at, uh, at Bradley when he was at Bradley, so fairly familiar. A little surprising to me that he went from a three, four man to a point guard, but he's done an unbelievable job with that. Uh, 
I think the biggest thing is Coach Underwood has put the pieces together and made a really good basketball team. And I feel like the whole is even better than the parts. Um, I got to give him a lot of credit for that because that's really what coaching is, is trying to take a bunch of individual guys and make them into a good team. And he may have had better talent with some other teams. I don't know for sure. You guys would know better than me. I don't follow him that closely. But certainly they're playing as a team probably better than any team he's had. So that's my assessment. We have four questions up now. We're going to start in the back standing. Coach, Spencer Thomas from the Duke. Um, since you touched down in Brooklyn last Tuesday, you've basically spent the last week and a half alternating between hotels and arenas and what I imagine must just sort of feel like you're down in a bubble. I'm curious what's that been like for you, for someone who's experienced it before, and then for your team who are sort of just stuck together for the last week and a half. Well, not only that, but we also played at George Mason and, uh, and VCU where we were out uh, Friday to, to uh, uh, Tuesday. So we had a long stretch then as well. I mean, in a lot of ways, it's really good because you have nobody else but each other. You know, so you're pretty isolated and you're pretty concentrated on basketball and, you know, two tough games on the road at George Mason at VCU and then right into the A-10 tournament. Um, and we, we played well with it, so maybe we ought to stay out more often. Uh, hi, Coach. Uh, LeBron, uh, obviously supporting you guys on social media, and I, I guess he sent you guys some shoes as well. Uh, have you heard from him personally? And it, what, what's it like to have uh, the King uh, on having your back here in the tournament? Well, it would, it would be better if he was on our team. <laughs> then we might have a little bit of an advantage, right? Like, I mean, he'd be hard to deal with. Um, listen, LeBron's a great human being. Um, he's done more for our city, you know, Akron, uh, for his community, uh, education in the inner city, uh, cares about people that have been committed to him, and he'll never forget, you know, people uh, that have helped him. You know, he likes me, but he loves Drew Joyce, so who's our associate head coach. They've been best friends for forever. And he cares about us, and that's it's nice to have him as a part of our program. I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for him. Right hand side, Keith. Uh, Greg Eklund, this is for uh, WESA, the NPR station in Pittsburgh. Your players had talked the other day about wanting to win this tournament game for you, since you had never won an NCAA tournament game. Given the nature of your business. Were you looking ahead to that second round matchup, or did you have a chance to appreciate getting that first tournament win? You know, I don't want this to sound the wrong way or or arrogant because certainly, I'm certainly not arrogant. But I only played in three of them, and I, we're we're the lower seed every single one of them. Uh, even Bob Huggins didn't win his tournament game at Akron, so it's not so easy when you're the lower seed. But I really don't care about any of that. My only thing is, hey, get your team ready. To play and play a good basketball game and so none of that ever goes through my head um, I think if you think about those things as a coach you're headed for disaster like where's your next job what's the next you know you, you just have to stay in the moment and make sure you're relaxed and that you convey what your team has to do to win hey Keith Jack Morgan for DSTV and my question was Jimmy Clark Seemed like he's kind of been in a rut shooting wise. He did shoot two of seventeen that game against VCU, and really only four of twelve and zero of three from the three point line against BYU. Um, have you given him any advice, or have you just kind of let him go and kind of let him gain that confidence back himself? Well, did you see the the four or five previous games? Like you have to be foolish to talk about. I mean, guys go through that all the time. Even you know we're. We're in Creighton's arena. Even Kyle Korver probably went through that, right? One of the greatest shooters of all time. So I'm not worried about Jimmy Clark. He's the least of my worries. He'll show up, and regardless uh, regardless of what he shot, he, his team won. And so I'm not worried. He made two big plays at the end of last night's game, and that's all you can ask of a guy. He tries hard every single play. He'll, he'll put the ball in the basket. Five minutes to go. Three questions are up. Go, please. 
and keep Joey Wagner with 24-7 sports. You mentioned, mentioned Illinois playing as a whole better than their parts, and parts are a couple all-league guys. So what is it about the whole that is that you've observed is connecting so well for them right now? Well, they share the ball. I think that's the first thing that jumps out at you. Um, they've got a lot of complementary parts that fit well together. Um, and then they have the one great, great player. But I think they got a lot of guys that are more talented than probably they get credit for, like Hawkins, for instance. You don't hear a lot about him, but he does a lot of good things. Um, they, they have a deep bench that you probably don't hear too much about because, you know, the main guys get most of the – but I do think the biggest thing that has made them better is that the big guys played better, and he's played more which gives them a legitimate chance to win the national championship. I think without him, uh, they would have very little chance to win the national championship. You have to have somebody dominating that can score the ball inside at times. Otherwise, you're relying on just slashing to the rim and jump shooting. So he gives them an opportunity to, to be better, and you can see Coach playing him more and more and more and more. Coach Corey Chris and DK Pittsburgh Sports. Um, Kareem talked about how last night after the win, you guys took a couple hours to enjoy it before moving on and focusing on Illinois. From a coaching standpoint, how do you shift the players' focus when emotions are so high and you have to kind of get them back on track to get ready for another opportunity like this? I mean, you have to be ignorant if you can't get focused, right? Like, we that game's over you got to get to the next one and these guys are bright guys we have we have some competitive guys in the room I'm not worried about it at all I just more than being focused I just want them to be relaxed I think that's more important the focus will be there you're playing in the biggest stage in college basketball so you know they're not going to have any trouble with focus it's going to be hey can I relax enough to play a good game Keith, yeah, I'm not sure this is completely fair because I asked you why you're you're leaving and you didn't mention this as part of it. But what's your disposition toward the the changes in the the game and the sport and you know how how fast it's moving? You know what I'm referring to, you know NIL and all that and portal. Uh, and are you you know are you glad to to not be swimming in it anymore after this? It's a fair question. It's a it's really like. A question that we need to answer. Um, so I don't love everything about what I see in college basketball, but there are some things I like. I mean, I think the players deserve to be paid. I don't know if there's a better system than this. I'm sure there is. Uh, the thing I don't like, I try to treat my players like I would my own my own son who's a professional athlete. I don't like the fact that guys can just quit so quickly. Uh, I, I don't think that really teaches them much. Um, I think I think it, it teaches them to quit. And some guys should leave, but other guys shouldn't. So um, I think that's the part I don't really like. And I think the problem with being able to do it multiple times, two, three, four, and really right now unlimited, I don't think that's great. I don't think it's good for anybody. It's not good for college basketball. It's not good for the fans. It's not good for the student athlete. And it certainly isn't good for coaches. Uh, I like the fact that they make money. I wish there was a way to, you know, I, I'm a former financial advisor, so I wish there was a way to put it in a trust and so they understand that, you know, this is money that needs to be used in the future to help their lives and not spend it all. As we all know, uh, adults don't do a very good job with money. Young people certainly aren't going to do a very good job with money. So I wish the system was a little bit better for them in that regard. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't love everything about it. And I think it's, it's, it's first and foremost, it's not great for the student athlete in all regards.